Hi Cooking Gang, I thought I'd come on here just to share with you something I'm doing today. It's a rainbow cake that can take a little bit of time and um, it's lots of colours so I didn't want to do it if not everybody wanted to go out and buy lots of colours. So I thought I'd come on here and show you how I do it. I have a basic Madeira cake for the recipe which means it's a little bit more firmer um, so I can buttercream it down the sides and that. And I one and a half times the recipe. So it's 375 grams of self basing flour, 263 grams of butter and sugar, five eggs and a little bit of vanilla for flavor, a vanilla essence for flavor. So basically I cream the butter and sugar with the electric whisk until it's nice and light in color and fluffy. Then I add one of the five eggs at a time with a two tablespoons of flour. So I crack the egg into it and add two tablespoons of flour, then mix it up until all the five eggs are incorporated. And then you put the mixer away and you fold in the rest of the flour. And then when we get to the next bit, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. This is the stage, I've just mixed the butter and the um, sugar together until it's nice and light and fluffy. Now I'm going to add one egg, two tablespoons of the self-raising flour, give that a mix, and then repeat five times till all five eggs are incorporated. I'm just folding the flour in. All I do to fold it in is a figure of eight. All right. So it just incorporates all the flour, but you're trying, what you're trying to do is keep the air in your Madeira cake. So just fold it over, keep doing your figure of eight, and then once all the flour's mixed up, make sure you're getting it from the bottom, turn it over a few times, cut through it, so you're doing deliberate actions, your figure of eight till it's all mixed in. Right, I've got my five bowls of cake batter evenly measured out and now all you do is add your colour to each bowl. So I'm going to add orange to that one. Four drops in there. And then I'm going to do a blue one. So I'll do four drops. Two, three, four. And I'm going to do, of course, I'm going to do a red one. Put four drops in there. This, for the drops, is trial and error. If you don't like the... You want it darker when you've put them in, then um, please do that. So four drops of yellow. One, two, three, four. If you're using shop bought colors, you will want to put a bit more in. They're not as strong as these ones. And I'm going to do a green one. So basically, I'm putting two drops of yellow. Oops, sorry, jogged you there. And two drops of blue. And then you mix them, but don't mix them vigorously, so don't forget you've got air in them. So what I'm going to do with this one is still try and fold the colour in. This is the blue and yellow one, so hopefully it will go green. And if I'm not happy with the colour, then I'll put some more colour in, but I think this will probably be alright. So this is trial and error, if you're happy with the colour. You do lose some in the cooking, so it do go darker than what you think. And that... Um, and I'll come back to you when they're all mixed up. Right, all my colours are mixed. Green, orange, blue, yellow, pinky, red. And what I've got is I've got five pans that are specially for rainbow cake. And I've sprayed them with my cake release that I use. But what you'd need to do is um, oil them, uh, put your butter on them and then grease proof paper them. If anyone wants to borrow these, more than welcome. Obviously you can only have one set at a time. But the other thing that you can do is you can buy um, pie tins from um, the supermarket or wherever and use five of those if you want to, which is what I used before this. But these are a nice little shape. These are about six inches, I think. And I've got the oven set at 180 degrees and these will take about 30 to 40 minutes. I'll check them after 30. Obviously they're a smaller cake and that, so I'll check them after 30 minutes. I thought I'd just show you a quick look at all the colors in the tins before they go in the oven so we can see how much of a color difference 
they are. The outside always gets, oh, so it's going brown, and that, but it's when you cut it on the inside that the colour really reveals itself when it's cooked. But they're all ready to go in now. Right, half an hour in the oven and they are well and truly done. So I would check them after 25 minutes. Um, but these are done. You can see what I mean about the brown tinge on them. But when you cut them, it will be the true colour. And that's so I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'm slightly tinged right there. Oh, beautiful. Smart amazing. Well, what I'm going to do is just show you. These have been in the freezer since I cooked them the other day. They've been out an hour or so, so not quite defrosted, but it would make it easier for me that when I pile them up, they're all a little bit disjointed. So I started off by trying just leveling them out a bit. And what, how you do that, so let's get the red one, is you just take a bread knife and just make it gentle as you can to try and even it up. Looks like the moonscape. So this is the pinky one and you'll see the colour when I say it was brown, it's more vibrant in the middle. You'll see the orange one there. So what I'm going to do is level these up so that when I pile them on top of each other, they should sit a little bit level, leveler and then I can just fill it up the oven, uneven bit with buttercream. I'll just carry on with these and I'll come back to you. Well, I've got all the cake trimmed off I think as far as I'm going to go with it. I've got a board. I'd normally, this is um, called a cake drum. You normally have a cake board that's the same size as your cake if you were doing a professional one. But I haven't got one so I'm not going to bother. So I'm just going to stick the bottom layer of the cake to the cake board just with a bit of buttercream that I've made and hopefully this will be in the middle and then all I'm going to do is put some, uh, the amount of buttercream I want I'm just spreading it on between each layer of cake and then I might trim it if it's not the same shape all the way around but I'll come back and show you that I'm just going to get on with this and I'll come back to you. All I'm doing here is I've got a bread knife and I'm just going around the cake because it's sticking out in places and not in others. If Leah was doing this, it'd have to be spot on. She would take ages doing this. But basically, I'm just cutting the ends off as I go down. So it's a little bit more even, even though it's the same size tin for some unknown reason. Bits are sticking out like here. So I'm just going down with the bread knife, trying to keep it in the same place. But for some reason, the orange one is massively bigger than one size so is the other. Like that. Yeah, once you should, shouldn't move it really. So I'm just trimming it so it's the same dimensions all the way down. And if you want, you can eat the scraps of the cake. Or if not, put them in the bin, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to carry on with this and then I'll come back to you. Right, so that's the cake all trimmed up. As good as I'm going to do it anyway. And now what I'm going to do is I've got some buttercream in my piping bag. And I'm going to what we call dirty ice. So I'm just going to do a thin layer of buttercream. So what I'm going to do is put some on. And get my spatula and just make sure it's all even all the way around it doesn't matter if it's a bit of a mess because this is why we call it dirty icing and then i'm going to put this in the freezer uh, sorry in the fridge to set up before i do the top coat so i'll come back to you right here's the cake what i call dirty ice it's just a, a thin layer of buttercream that i've swirled around so that um, all the crumb from the cake now sticks to it. I'm going to put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes and then I'll do the top coat and even it all out. Right, the cake was in the fridge for about 20 minutes to, just to harden off and then I'll put another coat as you can see it's gone on smoother and better. You can still see bits of the cake but that's the effect I want for this. 
and I'm just evening it up and then it will go back in the fridge for another 20 minutes so it's hard again and then I'm going to just smooth it out with a little bit of kitchen towel but I just want to make a bit of a pattern up what I'm doing this is not a professional cake or anything this is from one niece his boyfriend and Leah was the decorator I was allowed to get this far and then she would come along and tidy it all up and then we'd ice and decorate it but this I haven't like she would spend ages getting this all level because the icing needs to go on and obviously needs a professional finish but we're not doing that we're just going to stick a load of chocolate on this which I'll do in a minute so I've just created a little bit of an effect there just put a little bit of ice in there. I'm not worried if you can see the cake. That's a red bit above. And just pull it up. There we go. And just pull that over there. I've made it as even as I possibly can. You can still see a bit of the cake, but I'm going to do a chocolate drip around the top. So I'm not too worried about that. And it's going back in the fridge. I've just got the cake out of the fridge. It's now very hard. Next, it's all set. Um, when Leah and I used to do drip cakes, or well, Leah did the drip with um, milk, candy melts in the microwave, mix it with a little bit of olive oil, and it dripped really good. I'm not great with that, so I treated myself to one of these, one of the cake companies. You just stick it in the microwave, and then hopefully, it just drips all you do, run it down the side, and it drips down, and create, as you will see, if I'm coming down, a drip. I'm just doing this on the edge of the cake and just letting it drip to where it wants, and then what I'm going to do Fill in all on the top here. It dries really quickly as you can see. Bits of mist, so you get different levels. Drip. Get my spatula and just spread this out so it covers all the top of the cake. It's such a good thing. You've not got the patience to do a proper drip. This is the easiest thing in the world. And what I've got, spreading this out so it covers all the buttercream cream on the top. It's lovely. It doesn't take long to dry. As you'll see it running down the cake. The coldness of the cake sets it. Just need a little bit of chocolate here. all covered on the top now I'm just going to decorate the life out of it so that's it I'll show you the top that's it you'll see it's run down as it wants and then I've got lots of different chocolate that Jake likes and I'm going to decorate it and I'll show you the finished bit there you go a very unprofessional decorated cake. I might take some, stick some more teasers. Another back, just go in the fridge until Amy picks it up tomorrow.